So I think we're on wine. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Filip Dmitrov. I'm development director of Farkana project. Uh, thank you for joining. So today I want to talk about our game server architecture. Um, give me a sec. Okay, um, about our game server architecture, um, how we deal with problems. Um, hello, hello. Yes, um, I think you know that uh, development of any kind of game is itself challenging. And multiplayer games, however, add a completely new set of problems to be dealt with. Interestingly enough uh, that, oh, okay, I can fix my screen, sorry. Uh, interestingly enough that um, Sorry, what's what was my screen? Okay. The core problems. Uh, the core problems are human nature and physics. Uh, so. Uh, Today, I will speak about scaling game servers, uh, about its problems itself, uh, Geo replication, controlling of our nodes, pros and cons of containerization, using Kubernetes in game dev industry, uh, some open source systems like Agonis, which we are using in our project. And I hope it will be interesting to you. So, First of all, uh, it all starts with the cheating. Uh, as a game developer, you usually don't care whether a player cheats in your single player game, uh, their actions doesn't affect anyone but him. A uh, cheating player may not experience the game exactly as he planned, but since it's their game, they have the right to play it in any way they please but multiplayer games are different. In any competitive game, uh, a cheating player isn't just making the experience better for himself. They are also making the experience worse for other players. As a developer, you probably want to avoid that, as it's intense to drive players away from your game. There are many things that can be done to prevent cheating. Uh, there are many ways, um, but the most important one, and probably the uh, only really meaningful one, is simple. Uh, don't trust the player. Uh, client in the hands of enemy, as uh, my good friend said once. Uh, Just remember, your players will try to cheat. So, authoritative servers and dump coins. Uh, this leads to a seeming, seemingly uh, simple solution. You make everything in your game happen in a central server under your control and make the clients just privileged spectators of the game. In other words, your game client sends inputs, just key presses or commands um, to the server and server runs the game and you send the results back to the clients. This is usually code using an authoritative server because the one and only authority regarding everything that happens in the world is the server. Of course, your server can be exploited too, uh, but we will not speak about uh, it uh, today. Uh, 
Using an authoritative server does prevent a wide range of hacks, those. Uh, for example, uh, you don't trust the client with the health of the player. A hacked client can modify its local copy of that value and tell the player it has, I mean, 10,000% of hit points, but the server knows it only has 10% and when the player is attacked, it will die regardless of what a hacked client may think about it. Uh, you also don't trust the player with its position in the world. Uh, if you did, a hacked client uh, hooked client would tell the server, I am at point 1010, uh, and the second later, I am at point 2010, possibly going through a wall or moving faster than the other players. Um, instead, the server knows the player is at point 1010, the client tells the server, I want to move one square to the right not the position, just the command. And server updates its internal state with the new player position at 11.10 and then replies to the player, you are at 11.10 and client just draw beautiful picture with right position of player. In summary, uh, the game state is managed by the server alone. Clients send their actions to the server server updates the game state periodically broadcast it to the clients um, and state just rendered on the screen by clients and nothing all so the network um, of course if we speak about multiplayer games we should speak about networking um, the dumb client scheme works fine for slow turn-based games, for example, strategy games or poker or trading card games or, and so on. And it would also work in a LAN, site, a LAN setting where communication are for all practical purposes instantaneous. Uh, but this breaks down when used for a fast-paced game over a network such as the internet. Uh, let's talk something about physics. Uh, suppose you're in San Francisco, uh, connected to a server in New York. That's approximately 4,000 kilometers. Uh, nothing can travel faster than light, not even by its own internet, which at the lower level are pulses of light electrons in cable or electromagnetic waves, light travels at approximately 300,000 kilometers per second. So it takes 13 milliseconds to travel uh, 4,000 kilometers. Uh, this may sound quite fast, but it's actually a very optimistic setup. Uh, it assumes data travels at the speed of light in a straight path, which is most likely not the case. In real life, data goes through a series of jumps called hopes in, the in networking terminology. From router to router, uh, most of which aren't done at less speed. Routers themselves introduce a bit of delay, uh, since packets must be copied, inspected, and rerouted. For the sake of the arguments, let's assume data takes 50 milliseconds from client to server. This is close to a best case scenario. What happens if you are in New York connected to a server in Tokyo? What if there's network congestion for some reason, delays of 100, 200, even 500 milliseconds are not unheard? Uh, back to our example, client sends some input to the server, uh, for example, at the right arrow. Uh, the server gets in 50 milliseconds away. Uh, server processes, for example, the request uh, and sends back the update immediately, and your client gets uh, the new game state. Uh, you are now at point one zero, uh, 50 milliseconds later. Uh, from you, from your point of view as a player, uh, what happened is that you press the right arrow, but nothing happened for a tenth of a second. Then you character 
finally moved one square to the right. This perceived lag between your inputs and its consequences may not sound like much, uh, but it's noticeable. And of course, a lack of half a second isn't just noticeable, it actually makes the game just unplayable. So what to do? Uh, first of all, we're using the technique called uh, client-side prediction. Of course, we have some powerful strategies to reduce uh, those problems. Uh, it works by having the client predict the actions of the game server and then sending them to the server at an appropriate time. If the server agrees with the prediction, it will accept the action and the game will continue without any delay. If the server disagrees, it will send back an updated version of the game uh, and client will need to update its prediction accordingly. Of course, we remember that we can trust our clients. Uh, further uh, server reconciliation, uh, it's involved refining that the game's data matched with the server data. Um, it's a consequence of predictions. And of course, uh, we uh, should uh, advance our server uh, availability improvement. Uh, about first two techniques, I think we will speak another day. Today we will concentrate on the last server availability. Uh, sorry. Uh, here we should start from description of good technologies available, uh, such as Kubernetes and clouds. Uh, clouds, it's a hosting that can provide faster performance and scalability, uh, as well as increased security, redundancy, availability of our servers, and so on. Uh, and most of the times, uh, clouds are using Kubernetes. Uh, it's a technology uh, which allows users to quickly deploy scale applications across multiple nodes uh, across uh, all over the world. Uh, it also provides a central platform for monitoring the status of applications and services. Uh, it's a very powerful tool for automatic managing uh, quickly and it quickly became the standard uh, for such applications a few years ago. Uh, but uh, we have a problem because uh, it's believed that Kubernetes is not some kind of silver bullet for game servers. Uh, as far as we know, uh, the Kubernetes has unstable state of its pods. Uh, so Kubernetes cluster has machines, machines run pods, pods run containers, containers run your application and the pod can be destroyed by Kubernetes engine uh, for various reasons, including uh, it can be, uh, it, 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 it can become unscalable uh, for an extended period of time. Uh, it could be evicted by the cluster due to resource constraints or terminated bar code controller due to an update or deletion of controller object and uh, so much more. Uh, so this is not a bug, it's the future of Kubernetes. Uh, it's very good for stateless applications, for example, good developed web services uh, which were created with Kubernetes in mind and uh, their Kubernetes uh, strategy will do in best. Uh, but if we're about gaming, uh, I need cons of it. Uh, I said about, about port. Uh, moreover, Kubernetes implies using of its balancers and that structure, which is not works good with the game clients. Um, and here I can tell you what we do before that. Um, 
some kind of traditional architecture in real-time gateway. We had a client which connects to the matchmaking if they want to start to play, uh, which connected to server manager, which spawns new instances of game servers. Um, Gear location of the structure calls American server or European server and so on. Player, players connect to the nearest and it works not so bad. Uh, but if we want to use the advancements of uh, modern clouds uh, using containers and Kubernetes to uh, manage our deployments, uh, we want to uh, reduce Kubernetes cons, which I tell you before. So how to do it? Um, there are a project which was developed uh, firstly by Google, and we decide to use it in our uh, Farcana game server, uh, which called Agonies. Uh, it uses Kubernetes as a backend, uh, and we can scale uh, our infrastructure habitually. Uh, it helped to manage and scale our game server infrastructure in efficient way. Uh, provides features like health checking, auto scaling, game replication, game server lifecycle management. Uh, of course, we can also use it to customize game server settings such as port numbers, CPU memory limits, etc. Uh, but it protects server from shutting down by Kubernetes or cloud management. Um, so our players won't lose their much uh, sessions. Um, okay. I think I can answer some questions. Uh, here I have, um, okay, first question was, how many people are involved in game development? So at Farcana development team, we now have approximately uh, 50 people, uh, but it's only development team. I don't know much more uh, uh i don't know so more about uh, other departments there are a lot of peoples too uh what challenges have you faced in the last month uh okay uh, if i speak about my part uh, uh now i mostly often server development as you can see during my presentation uh so the hardest part was in the last month i think recreating local development environment with reduced system requirements to our client development uh, we have to create a small configuration of our full uh, server environment uh, to use it in local machines and it was hardest in the last month. Uh, to tell us more about the current stage of development. And now we have cool playable game builds, uh, which we can test uh, and use. What kind of in-game audio effects should we expect, like gun sounds, character interactions, type of voice, etc.? Also, will proximity chat will be available? Um, I can't really answer this question. Uh, feel free to ask it to sound designer on the future streams. I hope he will be here someday. Uh, what's the maximum number of players on the map uh, during the current uh, game regimes which we had? There are eight players on a map. Uh, how you make development? 
Um, our clients are built on top of Unreal Engine. Um, how we make development. Uh, developers open uh, IDs and write code. Uh, animators create animations and so on. Uh, if I speak about developers and you are interested in which ID uh, do we use, uh, we're using JetBrains IDs, Vim, MX, and so on. Uh, what does it take to become a game developer? Um, it was my childhood dream to become a game developer, so I'm very excited about it. Uh, but if you uh, want to be a game developer, uh, you should understand that it's a hard job. Uh, hard, but funny and you really have to be ready to overwork to work on holidays uh, to work at night and so on um, how to join your development team um, to be honest we strongly need qualified unreal developers so if it's about you, feel free to connect with our HRs at LinkedIn. Uh, any other questions? So, no other questions. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you for your attention. I hope it was interesting to you. So, bye-bye.